Imam saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Imam, Ya Imam, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he is my neighbor in Jannah. So the Imam, he said, I said to myself, I, he did not, you know, not talking about me. I'm the Imam, I'm the Havid, I'm the Alim, I'm the Mufti. But he's talking about some simple man that I know. He who only just goes out and sell basic things on the street. And he's not an Imam, he's not an Alim, he's not a Mufti. Why would he deserve to be with Rasulullah in Jannah? So he said, instead of shak, instead of doubt, I kept it to myself. But the next night, the same, same thing happened. And the third night, the same thing happened. Rasulullah kept coming back until I went to the man and said, Ya hada, oh, this man, messenger of Allah was coming to me three nights in a row, telling me you are his neighbor in Jannah. What did you do? How come you received that status and you became not only from the people of Jannah, you became a neighbor of Rasulullah? So the man told him after a long discussion, he said, it's a long story, but I summarize it. He said, I got married to this beautiful young lady whom her father is well respected in the community. Well respected. And he said, in her in our wedding night, she sat on the bed and she started crying. And I thought to myself, she's shy because she's never been with the man. She lives in, a, in Syria. She lives in a Muslim country, an Arab country. And is aim for Ib to have a boyfriend and so on. She said, I said to her, La alayki, don't be afraid. Don't worry. We will get to this teacher. She said, no, that's not what I'm doing. She said, I am pregnant from zina. I am pregnant from zina. He said, I didn't know what to do. If I come out and I expose her, then the whole city would know about her and her family. And this old man that is well respected will no longer be respected. So I decided to conceal the sin and to look into my own sins and say, may Allah forgive me and forgive her. And I did one thing he said. I kept her at home in a different room. And he said, finally, the night when she was delivering her child, and she delivered the child, I took that baby and I said, give the baby to me, I'll bring him to you. She delivered a beautiful little boy, and I took the baby to Salat al-Fajr, to the masjid that I used to go, and I purposely went to the masjid late, put the baby right inside the masjid, and when the Imam said, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, and the people were about to leave, they saw this baby, and the people were like, Astaghfirullah, somebody left the baby here, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. He said, then I jumped, I said, Oh my God, my wife always wanted to raise a yati. My wife always wanted to raise someone who has no parents. Give the baby to me, we will raise it. So I took the baby, I gave it to my wife, and I said to her, I will never tell you story to any. So ya ikhwat if you laugh, if you conceal someone's fall and you look into yourself, then Allah may reward you like that. If you want the reward of Allah, do one thing. Be blind for what other people do and concentrate on yourself. Concentrate on yourself. Don't judge people. Brothers, you may be sitting with someone that you think he did something harab, his pants too long, he shaved the beard, he trimmed the beard. Don't judge people. You were not sent to judge people. But if you see something that you think is not Islamic, have a nice nasiha, conceal secret nasiha. 